It's got a full tank now. So there's no shut off backflow with these, so that's the problem with that. So she's topped off. Alright, so I just topped off both tanks and the E85 right now was $299. So it, it's going up too. So gas prices are on the rise. This will at least save me some money if I buy it in bulk all at once because who knows, tomorrow or next week it might be a 50 cents more. Hey, what's up? This is Rob Roy, the Plant Based Prepper. What I have here in front of me are two Duramax flow and go 14 gallon gas tanks. And I bought these to save me some money at the gas pump because for one, my truck takes E85, which is the cheapest gas out there right now. It only takes me about 40 bucks to fill up the tank with this type of gas right here, or it takes me $80 to fill it up with E87 or higher. Now, look at your manual on your cars and find out what is the recommended gas octane that your car should take. It's been tested and performs better with the recommended gas octane. Mine performs much better with the 85 and people have been telling me that yeah, but you get less gas mileage. I have not noticed that. But what I have noticed is that when I'm going up hills in the mountains, this thing does not bog down or slow down. It has more power to get up those hills. So I know it performs better and I'm driving three hours away almost every weekend to work on my log shed up in the mountains. And uh, it cost me $40 to fill up before I go, and it cost me $80 to fill up to get back. That's $120 a weekend, over $400 a month, just to go up there on the weekends. I don't know what it is up there, but when you get into other towns, uh, my reward number does not work, so I don't get discounts on the gas, and the prices are even higher. So, it's just the way it is. E85 gas is not served everywhere. I found it at Shell gas stations and there's only a few locations. I was fortunate enough to have a brand new Shell station just down the street by the freeway open up with E85. So instead of pulling around five gallon jugs, which will only get me so far, I decided to buy a 14 gallon tank. You normally would have to lift this higher than the tank that you're filling, right? Because it's a, it's a gravity fed system. It also has a pump right here. so. If you need to pump it higher than the uh, than the tank right here. You can just keep pumping it this way and you'll suck the, the gas out. But that'll take forever. So what I did was, I made it as simple as possible for you. The first thing you're going to want to do, place it with a valve stem. So you can pump air into it and put some pressure in there. It only takes 5 psi to pressurize the tank to get a nice good flow of gas out of that tank right there, out of that nozzle. You don't need any more than that because you don't want it to get too high and, and get dangerous for you. The next thing you want to do, get yourself an easy deflator. This is a mechanical deflator. It has a spring in it. So what you do is you put this on your valve stem. You set it to the PSI that you want. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then you just screw it onto the valve stem like this one. If it goes over 5 PSI, it'll let pressure out. So it will not go over 5 PSI in your tank. The reason why you want this is because if you're leaving it outside in the heat and there's nowhere for the air to go, it's going to pressurize that tank. You just want to keep it low so that it doesn't explode. Finally, the last hack you're going to want to do to these tanks is just change the tires. All I did was go to Home Depot. I brought the, the original tires in. Here's the original tire. It's a little bigger because it has rubber on it. The hole is the same. Even though the hole looks smaller on this one, the rod that it goes on fits in here perfectly. Take this one off, slide it on, and you got yourself a rubberized wheel instead of this 
hard plastic right here that just slides over the place and does not grip. I already have this one hacked. Uh, I'm going to hack this one with those three things, the valve stem, the deflator, and the tires. All right, before we get started, here are the tools and the parts you're going to need. You're gonna need crescent wrench. You're gonna need a three quarter inch rat, uh, socket and ratchet. You're gonna need vice grips right here in case you have to hold the rod in place while you unscrew the, the bolt on the end. The parts you're gonna need are these valve stems right here. Uh, this is part number S684-4, and I got this off of Amazon. It's Milton, and it says quarter inch NPT, because this thread right here fits right into the cap without modifying it. Then you're going to need the easy deflators. I went with this brand. There's other ones to choose from. So it comes in a four pack right here, and it just comes in this nice, easy carrying case. You can also use these when you're going off road and you want to deflate your tires to a certain PSI. You just have to make sure you set these properly before you do so. I think it's part 460435, if I'm not mistaken. So six by one and a half inch plastic wheel. Okay, that's what it looks like. The cap to make it easier for me. And then you see this right here. This is the uh, pressure relief screw. It just pops out like that. Okay. And all you're going to do is take your valve stem right here and screw it on. And I'm just going to tighten it up with my crescent wrench right here. Not too tight. I don't want to strip any threads or put it too far in. Just a few turns like that, that should do it. That's all there is to it for that hack. Second hack is to set this deflator right here, pressure release valve. So in order to do that, we have to pressurize the tank to five PSI and then adjust this until the, the air comes out. So we're gonna pressurize this tank to five PSI. So five PSI for this pump right here is the black area on this. PSI. Make sure it's screwed all the way in at first so no air comes out. Okay. Now we're going to slowly and with keeping pressure on here because if you unscrew it too far the spring will push this off. So we're just going to unscrew it and be quiet until we hear air come out. Oh, right there. Okay. And you need to screw it back in a little bit. That's it. And then they have this lock nut right here. Where you screw that forward. You tighten them both ways like that. Now that will keep it in place. Now when this thing gets hot and it creates its own pressure inside of here, this valve will open. Can you hear it? It will relieve pressure. You can also do it manually if you want. So there it is. It's safe to use that way. That's hack two. So let's get to hack three, which is changing the tires. I think this is about 100 pounds filled. So, yeah. In the air so I get to it. All right. <clears throat> I got the right one loose. This one has two washers on the outside and a nut. 
So you want to hold on to that. We're going to reuse the same hardware. And then it also has a plastic washer right here, a spacer. So that stays on there too. Now, before we put the other tire on, we need to take the other side off. And that's where we need vice grips right here. But you don't want to put vice grips on here because it's going to scratch this up. So put something over it and then grip it. All right, so holding the other side with the uh, vice grips is not working. The uh, rod still turns. It's on here pretty tight. So I'm gonna try it without the, uh, the rag here on this side and hopefully it doesn't mess it up too much. <clears throat> okay, it's on there pretty tight. Let's see if we get this loose now. There it goes, it's loose, okay. So, there. It did put some uh, marks on this rod right here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to spray it with some WD-40 and sand them out the best I can. If there's any uh, rough edges because that will eventually keep eating away at the plastic and you don't want that so get rid of any rough edges that you just created so this one had two washers on there. okay and now let's tighten them both at the same time we go third hack complete brand new tires look at the difference between this one that one let's put it on the floor much nicer Let's go ahead and give it a try. I know it's getting dark out here. I'm just gonna shine a light. Before you start using this, there are two valves down here at the bottom. You have to make sure both valves are open. So you have one on the top and one on the bottom. So do that. And you also have a valve right here, so you don't have to worry about coming out and leaking out of the nozzle because you have a valve right here too. You're not gonna be able to see the flow because it'll Splash out if I do, but you should be able to hear it. I need to get something to hold this uh, lever up. So that'll be hack number four, just tying this lever up. All right, so here's a bonus hack for you guys. Get it started. It's out of gas. It took seven minutes. It actually would have taken less time. I'd say about five minutes, but I added another hack right here to keep the handle up. And I ran back and forth a few times. You tell the difference. You can hear all the air going in and this thing is light. So uh, it's getting the last drop out of there. All right, that's it. So it took, I would estimate about five minutes to do it this way. It's not that hard. Don't get a hand pump. I like the electric pump I tried, but it's just so noisy and it lasts. Can you imagine all that noise for five minutes, even longer sometimes? I've uh, seen that on YouTube. People put the electric pump on here and it's just noisy and it was it was irritating to me. And let's say I'm in a parking lot filling up. I don't want to draw attention to myself while I'm, while I'm with this thing. So I'm just gonna find somewhere secluded. 
uh, stay nice and quiet and just use my pump and fill up my tank. This will get me back home and then I'll fill up my E85 when I get back. Sorry for the, uh, the lighting, uh, it got dark on me, but I hope you are able to see everything and you get the idea. Like that, and then just uh, wrap up your hose. Oh, and you're gonna spill gas. I forgot, release the handle so it shuts off the valve first. I had this on it, so the valve was open. And if I would have closed it, it wouldn't have leaked. I'm just going to sit this thing right here and uh, it right there. That way I can get to it at the gas station right here by just removing the cap. All right, well, that's it. I hope uh, this helps you guys out. Three hacks and a bonus hack. Uh, the foot pump I like because it's quiet. I tried the electric pump and it's noisy and you're in a parking lot somewhere with people around. It's going to draw attention. They're going to see what you have. Uh, it's just better to use a foot pump. That's it. If you can think of anything else, let me know. But until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, just keep prepping.